Hey everyone, in this short video, I will tell you about the structural directives in Angular. I am going to talk about some of their features and then I will show you a very simple code example which will show you how you can create your own structural directives. So the structural directives are those which are used for manipulating the DOM structure. They can either add, remove or modify existing DOM elements. An asterisk sign is placed before the name of the directive whenever it is used for any element in your application. The examples for the inbuilt structural directives inside Angular are ngif, ngswitch and ng4 and all of these directives are used to either add or remove the element from the DOM. There is an interesting observation about their usage and that is that we can only use one of such a directive for an element because what happens is let's suppose that there are two structural directives being used for an element and one of them is actually adding the element to the DOM and another one is removing it so angular doesn't have any way to know which one to give preference to or which directives logic should take precedence over the other one so this is why we can only use one structural directive at a time for an element and other features of these directives is that they can um, really improve the performance of the application because if there is an element which is consuming resources of your system and we are using structural directives to show or hide them based on the fact that if we need to use them or not then if they are not a part of the DOM then they will not keep continuing the uh, usage of all those resources. There are actually several guidelines for using these structural directives whenever we are creating new ones. First one is don't use ng because it is a reserved word for angular. Instead of ng we can use our own project's name or maybe the company's name for which we are creating the project. The class name of these directives should always end in the directive suffix and this is also a requirement for the custom directives. This is not a requirement for the inbuilt Angular's structural directives as is evident from the naming convention for ngf and for example ng4 and we will need to import the directive template ref and view container ref modules to um, do something or do anything with the template and the view of the template if we are creating new structural directives so now let's move on to the code example but before that i have a very small request to make if at any point of watching this video you think that you like the video and it is informative for you then please don't be shy about subscribing to this channel this will really help me to create new videos on a regular basis for you guys so for the code example the first thing which i will do is i will open up a bash terminal over here and then let's create a new angular application let's call it angular structural app and it will take a while for this application to be created so i will just pause this video while the um, required dependencies for this application are being downloaded so the new angular app has been created and now it's time to open this folder in visual studio code which is the editor which we will be using so let's do that so for this example i will create a structural directive which will add or remove a component based on a condition and then we will also do something extra to show you that we are not just limited to the manipulation of DOM we can also change the style of the elements when we are using the structural directives so let's do that the first thing which I will do is I will create a couple of folders the actually this is not a folder this is a file yep, the first one is for the components and the second one is for the directives now let's first add a component and for that I will open up the terminal and then ng generate component or in short we can write nggc and then we will have to write the name of the folder in which we want to add the component let's name it person
Oh, actually, I misspelled the folder, but it doesn't really matter. Let's just go ahead with this folder. So the first thing which I will do is I will import the input module and then let's add the input for two properties and these will be for the first name and last name. This will be a string. And then similarly we can have the last name too. Now we will be using this component to work with this structural directive which we will create. So uh, we don't need to do anything else. Oh actually we do need to do something else over here. Let's create a div and then we should show the first name and last name and that should be it now let's add a new directive and we can use this same syntax that we used for the component in the terminal which is ng generate now instead of component we need to write directive or in short we can write ng g and then d and then we need to give the path of the folder and this time i think i'm not going to make the typo which i did with the components folder it should be directives and then um let's name this directive as show person right so now in this directive the first thing which i will do is i will import the required modules which are input and then template ref and then view container ref now we need to inject these modules as dependencies into the constructor of this directive so um, let's do that let's create private members to inject the dependency template ref and then this should be for any kind of template and then private view container should be bind with view container ref after this it's time to create the input property for this directive which we will be using to um, read the input values so what this directive will do is it will accept the age for the person and if the age is above a certain limit then um, it will create the view for the component and then it will add it to the DOM otherwise it will simply remove it from the DOM like the structural directives should do so let's do that first let's write input and then we are actually going to use the setter function so and we will also or we should also use the same name as the selector because if we will not do that then we will have to write the directive name and the name of the of this property separately inside the component so we should use the same name as the selector name when we are creating the property so we will need to provide the age as an argument and this should be a number now if age is let's say above 50 then we will create the components view otherwise we will simply remove it from the DOM and now for the exact code to um, create the view for this component first we need to create the view and we can do that by using the this dot um, view containers create embedded view function so and we will need to send in the template as an argument which will be injected and after this for the else part we can remove the view and this can be done by calling this code this dot view container dot clear and now in the app component i am going to i don't think we need all of this default stuff so let's remove all of this and then first let's create 
a person component on which we will use this structural directive and where is it right person is here and we will also need to provide the first name and last name so first name actually we also need to include it in inverted commas and then for last name all right so that should be it but before we do anything let's just run this app and see if we can see the person being added to the dom or not so for that i will simply call the ng serve and this will this command will create a server locally on the port 4200 so we can actually run the application on that port so i'm just going to you know restore these windows to a smaller size so that we can see the changes side by side so local host actually i have already been creating the example previously so all right so this is the person component which we were working on or which we created with these first name and last name john and doe all right you know what let me just expand it a little bit so that you can see the entire thing right so now what uh, we will do is after this we will add the directives usage to this person component and for that we need to use the selector name which is written over here and we can use this directive along with an asterisk symbol so app show person and this will accept the age as input because we have um, added the input property for the age over here and now what should happen is if the you know what I'm just going to set the age as 55 because if the age is above 50 then the component should show otherwise it should not show and now let's test our code the component is showing and now if I will you know set the age to a smaller value which is lesser than 50 then let's see what happens the component is removed from the DOM and we can also inspect the page and we will see that the component is not there but if we will set the age to 55 then we can see that the app person component is over here so um, this structural directive is actually removing the entire component if it should not be available now it's time to do that something extra which i talked about So along with adding and removing the component from the DOM, I am also going to add some style to it and let's do that. So I'm just going to copy and paste some code over here. What we can do is we can access the root component or the host component by accessing the root nodes properties or root node arrays first item. So I'm just setting the display style and then the border style to some values like solid black and border which should be two. So whenever the component will be visible, then the border of the component will also be set along with um, showing the component based on this condition. So let's save the code and you can see that the border has been applied to this component and we can do any kind of changes to it like change the border color, etc. So this directive over here is acting as a both a structural and attribute directive because the structural directives should only be for the manipulation of dom and attribute directives should be used to um, play with the look and feel of the components or with any um, elements but still it is a structural directive because at its core it is actually adding and removing a component based on a condition so yep that's how you create structural directives based on your um, requirements in your application so 
i guess that should be it for this video guys and if you have any questions about this entire thing then you can use the comments section and if you think you like the video then please a like on it and also subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so so i will see you in the next one till then have a great time